welcome to panel discussion number five. Um, how do we move from here, rethinking community? And before we begin, we want to say thank you for all your emails and comments. We've been getting many uh, really encouraging thoughts and many uh, communications. We want to thank all of you for watching us uh, today. And my name is Francisco Guevara. I'm co-executive director of Arquetopia Foundation. I will be uh, your moderator today. And I am Nayeli Hernandez, program coordinator. We want to welcome our panelists, Natalie Angle from Residency Unlimited, Shengli Chilian from Escuela de Artes Plásticas y Audiovisuales Arpa Wap, Junpei Mori and Kanoko Tamura from Paradise Air, and Gordana Sikik from Belgrad Artist Residency. And I'm going to introduce formally each one of our panelists. So Natalie Engle from Residency Unlimited is co-founder and executive director of uh, this program. And uh, Natalie is a history and political science major and graduate of the Ecole du Magazine International Curatorial Studies program in uh, Grenoble. And from 2000 to 2008, she worked at Location One as the director of the International Residency Program. Previous positions include uh, Sotheby's uh, Cataloger, Impressionist and Modern Art Department, American uh, Center in Paris, uh, director of the Residency Program, Curatorial Assistants, Ecole uh, de Beaux Art in uh, Paris, uh, Curatorial Assistants, Union Centrale de Artistes uh, Decoratifs, also in Paris. And in 2008, Natalie received the title of Chevalier of the Order of Arts and Letters from the French government. So we want to welcome uh, Natalie. We also want to welcome Sheng Li Chilian from uh, the School of Visual Arts from uh, Boab. Ms. Chilian received her Master in Ibero-American Literature, Bachelor of Linguistics and Hispanic Literature. Her professional experience is diverse. She has a professor, uh, as a professor, broadcaster, reporter, writer, and editor of multiple media, including books, newspapers, and magazines. At BWAP, she has dedicated herself to uh, advising on strategic planning and the quality evaluation, as well as communication, design, innovation, and fundraising. On the academic side, in addition to working as a professor, she has been a researcher and cultural manager in areas such as literature, communication, education, and visual arts. Her experience spans many years in the areas of design, development, and academic planning. She currently serves as the director of WAP School of Plastic and Audiovisual Arts, uh, one of the largest universities in Mexico. We also want to welcome Junpei Mori and Kanoko Tamura from Paradise Air. Junpen Mori is an architect and director of Paradise Air. He was born in Malaysia in uh, 1985. He designed the new Hashiho City Museum of Art and uh, the Learning Center Viva, design director, and he's also an assistant professor of architecture in Tokyo University of the Art, Faculty of Fine Arts. We also want to welcome Gordana Sikik from Belgrade Art in Residence. Gordana is a multidisciplinary artist, president of Center uh, 424, nonprofit and arts run organization, founder and artist coordinator at Belgrade Artists in Residence, and co founder of the Marshall Artists in Residence. She is a shamanic artist studying and incorporating traditions and innovations in shamanism, both ancestral and contemporary. She was born in Belgrade, Serbia, where she currently lives and works. She completed her PhD in arts in 2018, undergraduate and graduate studies in painting in 2005 and 2009, uh, respectively, and the Faculty of Fine Arts in Belgrade. In 2004, Sikik won the Lubika Sokik and uh, Perspective Awards. She is a member of the Association of Fine Artists of Serbia and exhibits nationally and internationally. We want to welcome all of our panelists again. And I want to introduce now the formal um, the, the panel formally. How do we move from here, rethinking community? And I'm going to read the paragraph that describes specifically what we're going to think about. And also then I will be introducing a few slides to contextualize it. An uncertain future, quote unquote, is what would closely describe the reality that artist residencies are facing after the events of the year 2020. We have all been forced to rethink our relationship to place and history and to re-examine our sense of community. More than ever, borders have proven to be a fragile invention. However, the restrictions on mobility have been experienced by everyone. Emmanuel Levinas, the preeminent philosopher of ethics, wrote, the other concerns me as a neighbor, 
uh, quote unquote. And thus, this is an opportunity to explore new collaborations across borders beyond traditional uh, residency networks to reimagine our communities and expand the possibilities of our interconnectivity. In the words of Audrey Lord, uh, opening quote, without community, there is no liberation, closing of quote. How can residencies become an affront to the order of things, quote unquote, and seize the opportunity to interrupt the violent continuity of history? How do we move together from here? And as, as you all know, we have been rethinking the possibilities of residencies. And uh, today I'm going to present a few slides and a few questions that will contextualize the panel, like I said. And one of the things that we are thinking about is how empire, and you know, it begins or it expands from the British Empire, has affected all areas of culture, from artist residencies to museums to galleries, art fairs, biennales, and actually all places where imperialism has shaped societies. And this is an ongoing conversation that we have been seeing on the media. So I'm going to introduce uh, the slides now. So here we go. So uh, this is, uh, I want to introduce two quotes from uh, two scholars that we deeply admire. And the first one is from James Baldwin. Freedom is not something that anybody can be given. Freedom is something people take. And the second one is, in uh, from Kirsten Pye Buick, which is also one of our keynote uh, speakers, in places where imperialism has shaped societies, freedom is usually experienced at the expense of identified and targeted groups. And we want to think about the question of freedom, specifically in these uh, very uncertain times. And I also want to introduce uh, this image, which is a painting of the Declaration of Independence. And this is a collage by Arlen Parsa. And this is a very relevant image because all the ideas of independence influence all the independent movements in Latin America. However, when we look at this painting and looking at the work of Arlen Parsa, you can see that the red dots cover the faces of all the men who enslaved people in John Trumbull's painting, Declaration of Independence. So when the document was being signed, there were many communities still being enslaved and continue to be enslaved. And even Jefferson expressed in several occasions that he disagreed with the movements of independence in Latin America. He believed Latin America should only get freedom in certain degrees. So one of the things that we've been thinking about in the last few days is how do we as residency programs become free in a sense to be able to continue the work that we do? And the big question mark, of course, is the economic system. Today, the US dollar is the most important currency that we all use. And again, uh, looking at Arlen Parsons' work, these are the bills, uh, the, you know, the, the images that we see on the bills covered with red dots are the faces of all men who were slave owners. And of course, this is, again, uh, still currently in use. Now, uh, I always think about uh, Monticello. And, and, and the plantation that Jefferson uh, designed and constructed, because it is a monument that UNESCO uh, declared world heritage. And, and it is a very precise and interesting moment when UNESCO appear in, in the world uh, of culture and incorporated many of the thoughts of freedom in many of the documents that would actually determine the direction in which culture would go. A few years later, in 1987, UNESCO declared Monticello and the University of Virginia a monument to freedom, World Heritage Site. And the, the characteristics that were included to declare this monument World Heritage Site is that it reflected the ideals of freedom that Jefferson wrote. As we know, and as we've seen in the last few years, the conversations about Monticello reveal that this monument was uh, built by slave enslaved labor, which is very interesting to think about when we think about culture, when we think about how monuments are invented to represent the ideals of freedom. And I did a very uh, quickly Google search. And yesterday I found an article in, at The Guardian that presented the British companies with links to slavery. And I uh, Google all their offices only in Mexico. And as you can see, this is a map of Mexico City. And you can see all the offices of companies, only companies, uh, British companies, with links 
to slavery. We're not even considering the links of slavery within Mexico or the Spanish Empire or uh, you know the United States tradition in relation to the invasion to Mexico, et cetera. It's only the Mexico City offices of British companies with links to slavery. So it is a very complicated um, moment in history when we have to think about what is our next step. Now, there's this project that I also found that is connected to the article, and it's titled Legacies of British Slave Ownership and Its Cultural Legacies. And it lists 16, uh, 669 records of actual paintings, sculptures, you know, masterpieces of art that have a direct connection to slavery. So there is no uh, institution in the arts that is actually uh, exempt from slavery and the economic system. And right now we are in a very interesting point in history where we can rethink our relationship, where we have to rethink how we want to share, how we want to reconnect with each other. So uh, with no more further ado, I want to introduce our first panelist, uh, panelist uh, Nathalie Engle from Residency Unlimited. So first of all, I want to thank Architopia Foundation for organizing this amazing series of panels. I'm learning so much from the incredible speakers and their individual perspectives reinforce my belief that the structural elasticity of artist residencies is conducive to generating agency at many different levels. Here in the US, these last few months, we are living both the pandemic and a flourishing racial justice movement which was ignited by the brutal killing of George Floyd. Recent figures indicate that the Black Lives Movement protests could be the largest movement in this country's history, which is pretty amazing. So James, the quote from James Baldwin really resonates. Moving forward, what will happen next, we truly don't know, but what we do know is that as an organization whose mission is to serve artists and communities, we have an obligation to create safe spaces, upholding values that we believe in and abide by. Founded in 2009 as a small not-for-profit arts organization, Residency Unlimited, also known as RU, its mission is to foster tailored residencies for international, US and New York-based artists and curators with year-round public programs and exhibitions. Our intention since the start was less focused on the notion of space generally associated with residencies than on placing our energy on building relationships with the artists through a tailored approach modeled by resource sharing. So we have hosted up to 60 artists and 10 curators per year, obviously not this year, and we organize a commensurate number of public programs. All information about RU Alum and programs is available online. We have a very detailed archive. The RU team is very lean and we end up by wearing many hats as is often the case in these small structures. In terms of place, the RU vision is definitely rooted in and molded by the fabric of New York City. In the imagination of the art world, New York is the center of global art practice with, it, with powerful galleries, dealers, auction houses, major museums, and influential collectors. The reality is that the creative life force of the New York art world is activated by a very large community of artists who are not the blue chip 1% and a multitude of small to mid-sized nonprofit art organizations that produce incredibly dynamic work with limited means. Within this ecosystem, artist residencies occupy an in-between, neither gallery nor museum, not so easily definable, but also a discrete space. And this is to their advantage, in my opinion, because it gives us greater maneuvering power, particularly in a context of increased neoliberalization of the arts. Faced with rising rent, small commercial galleries in New York are at the forefront of economic vulnerability and are no longer able to fulfill their role as nurturers of emerging artists as they sh they're shutting down one after the other. So the nurturing of art artistic practice, for example, is an area where artist residencies can fill in the gaps. We already do this, but we can do this to a greater extent. The knowledge that the structures of the art world are flawed is potentially liberating for artists who realize that they have to take things in hand. 
In a 2018 survey by Creative Independent titled A Study on the Financial State of Visual Artists Today, 1,016 practicing visual artists from all over the world and the U.S. were asked to reflect on the economics of making art. It comes as no surprise that the majority don't live off their art, but in their evaluation of the structures of the art world, artist residencies turned out to be a more popular source of support than gallery representation or art schools. This survey is available, by the way. And this is particularly true in the US where the cost of US college education, including art schools is crippling. Now to you, are you. Located in the nave of a church building in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, RU is a multifunctional facility operating as a shared workspace, a meeting hub and event space for monthly public programs, mostly articulated around residence practices. At its core, the RU's mission is driven by two key concepts, customizing the residency experience and partnering across multiple platforms to tap into New York City's vast pool of resources and creative people to foster a wide range of residency opportunities and build communities. Over a 10 year period, we have developed a large footprint that takes different shapes and forms not only with peer arts organizations, but also institutions operating outside the arts. So I'll just give two examples or three. Our longstanding relationship with Artists Alliance is an example. AAI is a subsidized studio program and gallery space in the Lower East Side, where RU artists who engage in strictly studio-based practices can access year-round two individual studio spaces there. We have a shared workspace. Our partnership with Kings County Center Hospital, which began in 2016, is a very active one. Last year, an RU artist was commissioned to realize a mural in the hospital's pediatric unit and work directly with the hospital staff, the children and their families from the underserved Flatbush neighborhood where the hospital is located. Another noteworthy partnership is with the New York Safe Haven Artist Residency Coalition to host artists at risk. All of our partnerships are listed on our website. So collaboration is vital to RU, to leverage assets and special expertise and access a wide range of communities. Through collaboration, we can support our partner organizations as they support our artists. We can create community amongst geographically separable individuals and organizations, and we can bring different elements of the art world together to foster new networks and opportunities. Another signature feature of the RU residency is our guest visitors program for network support, which consists in connecting and pairing the RU residents with art professionals for critical feedback on a weekly basis. To give you an idea of the extent of this program, which is administratively very uh, heavy, but very worthwhile. In 2019, we invited more than 150 art professionals to meet the artists individually. And this is a remunerated service. Young artists have commented by, that by having to present their practice to so many different people, their level of confidence increased greatly. For more mature artists, the Guest Visitors Program offers possibilities of engaging with art professionals deemed essential for the advancement of their careers. So whereas there are no requirements to produce work, for the most part, every artist has a project in mind, and perhaps that is because we are located in New York City. So we offer guidance at this level and each residency concludes with a public program or a group exhibition either at RU or at partnering venues where artists and curators can present their practice to New York audiences. Besides the international focus, we host residencies for US and New York based artists who are generally selected through an open call and panel process. We offer programs for artists from underserved and marginalized communities, and we also develop thematic residencies. In 2020, the title of the thematic residency is Food Futures, which is centered around food justice and resilience and brings together seven artists to reflect on pressing issues which have taken on a new urgency with the breaking down of food supply chains caused by the pandemic. Mid-March, the pandemic caused the closure of the RU facility. 13 international artists returned home and we shifted all residency activity and programming online 
including a virtual exhibition titled Postcards from Home that was organized by the uh, curators and the artists who left to create work basically from the confinement of their homes. In April, we launched the 2020 NYC Artist Residency and Food Futures program for 11 artists who all agreed to, to go virtual, which I'm very grateful to them because we had no idea how long this would last and they all said, okay, let's just do it. And we're still working virtually. So this was a first for all of us. And during 12 weeks, we organized remote weekly studio visits for each artist, artist salons and weekly discussion groups. So basically we just, we, we, we have transferred our way of working virtually. Our immediate plans is to reopen in September, depending on whether the borders reopen, but that is to be determined. So as to who knows what lies in store for us TBD, as we say, to be determined. What we do know is that we have an amazing community of 500 plus RU alum all over the world that is responsive and incredibly supportive. And this gives me hope for the future. Fundamentally, it's all about people and caring. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you, Natalie. Um, you've been asking really important questions. First of all, the question of social justice that is very relevant. Uh, and of course it has triggered many questions in from the perspective of the United States, but it has triggered, you know, it had expanded into many different spaces, into many different possibilities as, as we are now interconnected. So the question of moving forward is very relevant. Um, it's also very interesting to think about residencies as in between spaces and in the next presentation that we'll have after this panel on the book presentation contemporary Art artist residencies we also think about the idea in between how public and private uh, operate differently and how residencies are always located in that space that is uh, a very strange space now thinking about customizing and partnering is, is very relevant to all the residencies that we've been thinking about the question of the footprint, what is what we leave behind as residencies or what is the mark that we leave. Uh, and also thinking about collaborative work. Uh, many of the residency spaces have been thinking about also uh, food justice. So these are very relevant questions that we'll keep thinking about as we continue the discussions on the panels in this symposium. Now we also want to introduce uh, and give the microphone to Shengli Chilian from uh, ARPA uh, Hi. Good morning, Paco, Nayeli, Natalie. Good afternoon, Gordana. Good evening, Kanoko and Junpei. Good day to anyone else. I, I want to start by thanking Paco, Nayeli, Chris, and the entire Archetopia Foundation team, not only for inviting me to participate in this symposium, but also for the journey we have shared during these five years of relationship, field of work, friendship, and discovery. My name is Shengli Chilian, and I'm a founder and now director of the School of Fine and Audiovisual Arts at WAP, a public university with more than 400 years of history and one of the five largest in Mexico. ARPA is the youngest of the schools at WAP. We now offer three bachelor programs, digital art, plastic arts, and cinematography. Together with the Faculty of Communication, we also offer the Bachelor of Marketing and Digital Media, and we are close to offering a Master's in Media Analysis. Seven years after our foundation, we gathered a little more than 1,500 students and 70 teachers. ARPA is the second school dedicated to the arts at WAP. The other one is devoted to performing arts, music, dance, theater, why the separation? Our work model tends to a bit more to integrate multidisciplinary teams, shared spaces, and a marked reflection on the effect of technologies on human sensitivity. Underneath this shallow characterization is our imaginary, also built collectively under the expectation of creating a different school in the sense of rethinking as much as possible the traditional discourses on the academic cloister, the process of becoming an artist and the social function of art. 
Personally, creating an art school with unusual programs for a public university has a history. And I hope not to promote the violent imagery of Mexico, but it is what it is. 10 years ago, my brother Pablo was kidnapped and beaten to death. <laughs> Along with the seeking of justice, my family and I tried to find comfort in marches, civil associations, and memorials, but we did not find it. During my morning, a friend tried to comfort me with ideas of revenge. Then I began to think about the alleged murderers. According to the witness, they were six policemen. And I wonder what would lead a person or a group of people to be to that another human being without knowing him. My brother was visiting the city where he died. And I thought about hunger, about fear, about the inertia of the crowd. And far from hatred, I felt deep sadness for them. Despite the damage, the only thing that came out of me was compassion. They did not see the man. They dehumanized him. They did not know Pablo. They missed him. I tried to share my ideas with friends and colleagues, but back then the silence on the social violence was considered as a protection amulet. Not talking about violence allowed a feeling of detachment that brought a certain numbness and tranquility. These people also dehumanized Pablo, made him a number, a coincidence, a circumstance. It occurred to me then that art, its appreciation, its production, its promotion was a way to recognize, to relate and reconcile. The sheer idea of doing it gave me the comfort and, and motivation I needed. And there my story ends and begins the one of the ARPA community. What kind of community has emerged from those best first bubbles? A diverse, ambiguous, supportive, resilient, and also clumsy and vain community. From the discussions promoted through this symposium, I have been impelled to rethink once again my conceptions about culture and life in common, which quickly lead me to think about the identity constructed through alterity, the tension between individuality and collectivity, the ambiguity of culture and the different potentialities of human relationships. I am not going to be able to cover everything now, but I will try to synthesize some ideas with the transnational community of artists' residences in mind. I will begin remembering Svetan Todorov and his idea of that self-awareness demands recognition of the other. In order to look at ourselves, because our eyes are in front of our faces, we need mirrors of water or glass, but mainly of flesh and blood. The gaze of the other confirms our existence and establishes that recurring need for recognition. In this reciprocal game, the social character of the human being appears. Community is not necessary, it is required, even to build a notion of ourselves. Sergio Pitol, a Mexican writer, said, and I quote, we, I will venture to guess, are the books we have read, the paintings we have seen, the music we have heard and forgotten, the streets we have walked. We are our childhood, our family, some friends, a few loves, more than a few disappointments, assumed reduced by infinite subtractions. It seems to me that memory of that glances helps us to build identity. And if we know who we are, it is possible to establish horizontal relationships. And also, size matters when we talk about community. With vastness comes the danger of homogeneization as a linking element. When our community is small, it's relatively easier to challenge the dominant discourse. As the group increases, certain details get blurred and the risk of superficiality appears. Two things seem necessary. One, to make diversity visible, and two, to give time 
to go deeper on thoughts and the scope of our relationships. It is not enough to coincide, to deepen, it's also to involve. The emotional ties as are, power, as are powerful as the practical ones. That is why I like Antonio Cornejo Polar's notion of conflicting heterogeneity, going to explain the internal contradiction of Latin American in the clash of the Amerindian and Spanish culture. Because in, in that possible encounter, we do not need to reconcile everything, to polish everything. Oppositions are also powerful. What we have in common, which are our differences, where can we start linking? The time we share with the current mobility restrictions make us notice that the technology we use now for communications has changed the notion and the feeling of time, space, and identity. The time stopped being a continuity and become a simultaneity. With instant messages and the permanent news feed, everything happens at the same time. Also, virtual space is now ubiquitous. We are here, there, and everywhere. An identity is now a temporary disguise, a filter, a trend. We seem to be connected, but we are isolated, relating to a machine. But even under these difficulties, potentialities arise. This symposium is an example. We are listening, we are sharing, we are definitely trying. When Paco talks about interruption in the continuum of history, I can't stop thinking about Lesama Lima, from whom chance, randomness, noses in the continuity of causality, creating what he calls sudden. But the collision between randomness and causality is not enough. It is necessary that the union provoke a different reality and invite to live an oblique experience, which is a tangential approach to that newly created reality. It is not a detention, it's more like a transformation. For Lesama, the impossible by acting on the possible generates a potence. Which is Shengli, you have two minutes left. Which is an infinite possibility. A new way of making community is possible. We can imagine it so we can make it happen. And if it's possible, I am on. That's it. Thank you for this powerful presentation. Uh, we have joined, we have been together in many journeys. And uh, I also have to say publicly that we're very grateful to have been able to share spaces and collaborate with generosity and reciprocity uh, with uh, ARPA. In, it has been an incredible journey. And thank you also for reminding us for the social function of uh, ARPA in that sense and how mm -hmm. it has been challenging traditional academic models and, and then connecting it to police violence that is very relevant today and has always been relevant but more than ever is visible, which is very important. And also for reminding us that these events do not lead to hope, but they lead to action. And how this experience uh, help build ARPA and one of the greatest programs and largest programs in Latin America. And also for reminding us for the potentiality of encounters and the recognition of one another. The questions that you're asking, how can we challenge the order of things as we grow as a community is very relevant specifically for this panel. And as we uh, interconnect with different residencies and as we create and build these spaces, but also as uh, thinking about how oppositions are powerful. And as Audrey Lord mentioned, this friction when we encounter each other, that is uh, as we embrace uh, non-dominant differences should lead to true change. So thank you for these thoughts and, and we'll keep them in mind to expand the conversation uh, at the end of each one of the presentations. Now we also want to introduce uh, Junpei Mori and Kanoko Tamura from Paradise Air. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, we do. Right. Okay, um, so thank you very much for inviting us to this symposium. We're extremely happy to 
connect at this time of the um, uh, coronavirus and we are always looking for connecting with other residencies, but it's a, it's especially special one. Um, we feel very special at this time. So, and thank you, um, Shen Li, for sharing um, such a hard um, experience for you. And I'm very touched, and I'm very um, I'm very grateful to hear the stories from everyone else as well. Um, so from Paradise Air, um, let me first, oh, um, as my introduction, because I didn't um, introduce myself, um, I work as a um, translator and interpreter between Japanese and English in the field of art, but I work as a mediator in the Paradise Air Artist in Residence in Matsudo in Japan. And um, my job basically is to connect people, so I'm happy to be here. And um, with my colleague Junpei, who is the director of um, the residence. So maybe I can um, start by showing what Paradise Air looks like. Okay, so um, our residence is called Paradise Air, and Air stands for artist in residence, and I'll, I'll um, tell you why we call it paradise in a minute. Um, but these are this is um, scenes from the town. Uh, um, this is where we are. Do you see my cursor as well? Uh, yes, we can see it. Okay, so this building um, right here is the building that we are at, and this is Matsudo Station right by. So it's on the main um, main street from the station, just three minute walk. And um, this at the bottom, at the ground floor, two floors uh, from the ground floor, there is a pachinko parlor, which is one of um, a type of slot machines. Um, so it's um, like a gambling place, but it's not like an illegal place. It's a legal um, slot machine game shop. And um, it used to be a hotel before. So um, this is a hotel built in the time of the economic bubble in Tokyo, in Japan, in the 80s. And it closed, um, stopped operating as a hotel, but then it, they turn the ground floors into this pachinko place. And then this pachinko place is called Rakuen, which means paradise in, in Japanese. So that's why when we decided to use the upper floors, which were left um, back end as it is abandoned as the former hotel, as artist in residence, we decided to call it an artist in residence in paradise. And we do think it's a part. Um, it's a type of paradise, and these are the rooms. Um, and it's the rooms have different themes, um, so every room looks very different. And um, so this is um, this is our stuff, and our um, this our residency is run by different types of professionals, which I, we think is very important. So I'm a translator working in the field of art. Junpei is an architect. And we have um, theater expert, um, video artist, and photographer, and everyone work together to make this um, residence run as a very open space. And um, because Matsudo is in the middle of, um, in between the Narita airport and the center of Tokyo, we see this, um, we see our place as a hub or um, transit point where artists from all over the world can come and hop in and hop out on the way to somewhere else. And we got this idea because uh, Matsudo used to be a post town, which means like um, a town where you would stop and rest for a while when you're um, du um, during your journey, because you know in the earlier times in the 17th century, um, you would travel by foot, and 
it takes days to get to your uh, destination. So Matsudo was one of the places to um, stay for one night um, as part of your journey. And artists and um, poets and writers who, ha who had no money to pay the rent for the hotel rooms, um, they used to leave their artworks or they would just write a short poem in return um, or as an alternative way of paying the rent to the hotel rooms. So that's why we got this idea of um, one stay, one art, where when artists want to come stay in Paradise Air, as long as they share something with the town and with the residents in Matsudo, it could be a live concert, it could be a lecture, it could be a presentation. As long as they share one, one art or one piece of art um, with the residents of Matsudo City, uh, you can stay here for free for a short period of time. But um, since the coronavirus outbreak, of course, as you know, the um, all of the mobilities has stopped and it has been, be, um, become difficult for um, foreign artists to come over to stay. So we also want to introduce this new residence program that we started after the coronavirus outbreak, which we believe it might give you um, a topic of discussion of like what kind of things we can do for future um, and in the time of crisis and how we, how we as an artist in residence can react to what happens in the world. Um, do you see my slides now? Um, yes, we do. Okay, so we had all these restrictions from the government and um, we have been updating on the website on how we are doing and how we are canceling all of the reservations. But, um, and these are some photos from the residents. But we decided to um, open this new residency program called Matsudo QOL Award. And QOL stands for quality of life. Um, but it also, um, we also thought that QOL, QOL can be a keyword to think about what kind of life we are living in. And the point that we wanted to um, stress is that, um, so throughout the nation and uh, um, all of the art and culture and public, um, pub of its public nature, is a moment of crisis, but we do believe in um, people's life and the power of everyday life. And we do believe in artists as well and their power to um, resiliently continue living in any circumstances. So we talked a lot among the team what we can do um, in this time where we cannot um, easily invite artists from foreign countries, um, we decided to continue place trust and support as, as much as we can do for artists. Um, so what we decided to do is to invite artists um, who are living in within 60 minutes of traveling time from Matsudo Station. So anywhere basically um, in near Tokyo, like 60 minute train ride is okay. So anyone who is living somewhat close to Matsudo um, could apply to this um, residency. And we just finished the first period, which started in June 16th and ended um, last Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday for three weeks. And we had a Filipino artist and the Chinese American artist who happened to live in Tokyo in this time of crisis um, for, for different reasons. Um, Ralph came over to Japan with his wife who started studying in an art university in Tokyo, thinking that he could also join another artist in residency, but that got canceled. And um, G was- Kanaka, you both have two minutes left. Okay, and G is living um, in and working in another university in Tokyo, but she also didn't know what to do because she lost um, access to her lab laboratory and studio. So we invited them 
and um, they spend three weeks um, on their own. And we base the new rules for this new program is basically we do everything online. So we do this meeting online and we prepare the, all of the information for them so that they can just come over to the residency alone, check themselves in, start living um, living their life, lifestyle on their own without having actual physical contact from the staff members. But we kept uh, meeting online every, every week and they actually ended up um, getting to know each other and they decided to do a collaborative work afterwards. So what we are trying to do here is um, because we don't know what will happen in the future, um, we want to make ourselves available for any possibilities as much as possible. So um, the key is to keep ourselves open to open and also to, um, to, to stay in touch with everyone we know for now. So we also introduced um, artists who previously stayed in the residence to the artists who just came in for this new program and we connected each other online and we had a um, tea session where we could talk about different possibilities for the future and also to keep um, the trust in artists and its resilient power of art. So um, our stance is that we um, wish we try not to come up with an exact solution or un rest answer to this situation and keep ourselves open. And it just let everything happen um, as it is. So the collaboration between those two artists was something we didn't expect, but something that they came up with. And that was a very um, that was bri brilliant to see because um, that just showed how much artists can do um, reacting to what's available in front of you. So um, yeah, we are very much looking forward to op um, starting the second term, um, which starts next week. And we will keep ourselves online, but um, connected. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's um, our introduction and thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Kanoko and Junpei. It's very important to rethink spaces and how your program has been developing a very interesting space within the history and the context of where you're located is, is very important to, to think about. Also how residencies become hubs and transit points, not only in terms of uh, space, but also in terms of time, how artists stop in residencies and then their careers take different turns, which is also mm -hmm. very important to think about and connects also to what Natalie was uh, explaining. And on, also thinking about reciprocity, how reciprocity has to be a very important factor in what we think about from now on. And the examples that you were giving in terms of uh, residents staying and also giving back to the community, it's a very important point to think about by the end of the session, Nayeli Hernandez will introduce uh, the idea of alternative economies and a few sessions that we have planned. And also how you introduce the question of how can we react to what happens in the world, which has been a constant in each one of the programs and organizations that we have introduced. How do we make ourselves available to these possibilities and to change? So thank you for that. Now we have to, we want to introduce uh, Gordana Sikik from Belgrade Art, Artists in Residence. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Yes. First, I would like to thank you for inviting me and for organizing this amazing symposium and to inviting me to join and to connect with everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, so I would like to start uh, by introducing myself and our organization. My name is Gordana Zikic, and I'm a president of Center for 24, nonprofit artist-run organization. Belgrade Artist in Residency is a program taking place in Belgrade, the capital of Serbia, and it was established in 2012 
as a part of Center 2024. We welcome all artistic disciplines and we have several types of artists in residency programs. Besides artists in residency program by application, we have a new program inviting artists and curators for a short term residency program to spend time in Belgrade for research and connecting with the art community with the possibility to present their work and to organize artist talk workshop and to do an interview. Curator in residence and art manager program is specifically suited for networking and getting to know the local art scene. The kinetic residency caters to a variety of artistic disciplines, including dance, martial arts, acting, and performance. We welcome all art artists who have an interest in a study of movement and the body and wish to incorporate it into their artistic practice. Martial Artist in Residence is a program for artists practicing martial arts. The residency can be combined with our artist residency program if desired. The instructor, Boško Begovic, is qualified and experienced expert in numerous types of martial arts, including Aikido, Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, Boxing, and Mixed Martial Arts. In response to self-isolation measures all over the world, we're launching a new model, Belgrade Artists in Residency Online. It gives a chance to connect and interact online with artists and curators from different countries, creating new opportunities for engagement and consider possible avenues for collaboration. During this time of physical isolation, we look forward to finding new ways to connect, interact, and find new possibilities for meaningful exchange. At the moment, we're connecting through a Facebook group called Artist to Artist with former artists in residence and with the new ones. We also have a pleasure to share our interviews with artists and curators who are part of our residence in Belgrade, and you can follow our YouTube channel. Our goals are to provide an opportunity for creative and international exchange and to deepen cultural understanding between visiting artists and the Belgrade's art community. Also fostering cultural exchange between artists from different disciplines, create a dialogue and promote possible collaboration. So far, we hosted around 50 various artists and curators from all over the world and created collaboration with several organizations and three artists in residence exchange programs. First exchange is with artist run space Konstepirimen from Gothenburg, Sweden. Then the following year with home session artist in residency from Barcelona, and the last year with Les Cosessa, space from Barcelona that is co funded from the city of Barcelona, that is a former factory space now made into an art space with the local artist studios and various programs, including a residency. These exchanges are building bridges and forming meaningful relationships that results in exhibitions, workshops, artist talks, interviews, and, and similar. And they benefit both our residencies and local artists, including the wider audience. We are a self-supporting residency and we are not getting any funds from the government. So we're not in a position to offer any financial support at this time for everybody who is applying, but we're able to co-finance a part of expenses for collaboration exchanges that we made with these organizations in Barcelona and Sweden. And also we're providing a grant by giving a free accommodation for a new program, Artist Curators by Invitation. We can provide an invitation letter to the artists so they can apply for the grants in their countries to help them secure funding for, for traveling and living expenses or production costs. Uh, at the moment, we have accommodation in separate apartments. It is a living and working space that's fully e equipped. There are three apartments at different locations, but all close to center. One is 30 minutes walk from the center and only, only few bus stops. And the other one, it's 10 minutes walk from the center. And the third one, it's very centrally located. It's literally one minute from everything. The residence is personalized and tailored for each artist differently. And it is designed for providing a framework for building professional networks and possible collaboration within the art community. We're developing a program based on an artist's needs and inclinations. Our program includes Belgrade's artist residence expertise and introduction to local arts community and meeting with relevant professionals as curators, art historians, and also contacts with appropriate artists in order to facilitate possible collaboration. Also studio visits and visits to an art gallery openings and museums are arranged to facilitate the interaction of international and local art practitioners. 
Uh, the, the relationship between the artist and the host is an important aspect. Sometimes residents may become involved in a local community by giving presentations, organizing workshops, or collaborating with local artists and residents. For several years, we had a space in the center of the city that served as a studio and also for presentations, workshops, or small exhibitions. At the moment, we are in between spaces and searching for a new one that would fit our needs better. During that time, we're collaborating with the local cultural centers to continue providing possibilities for artists that are coming. We have a possibility for connection with alternative local art spaces with a possibility for artists to create workshop, exhibition or seminar or even an open studio day to show an art that's in progress. Several exhibitions were held in a cultural center called Magazin. It is an artist-run space with a big gallery space and, and it is centrally located. The other artist-run cultural center is called Catch 22, and it has a huge gallery space in one part and the other part is space used for concerts, performances, and similar. We're looking forward to collaborate with other like-minded organizations in the world. This sustainable partnership could lead to joint art projects and foster the mobility of local talents by way of exchanging and promoting abroad and locally. And addressing the question, how do we move from, together from here? Based on the experience with running artists in residency, we came to the idea for the future development and connection. We believe that it is important to create an online space for all contemporary art in one place, creating an art platform with all possibilities, a social network. Our professionals can present their works, art ideas, uh, spontaneously, the outcome of this is created the database for contemporary art. The virtual space is open, interactive and public space that helps to create online art community, connecting art professionals such as artists, curators, art managers, galleries and museums, and creating a relationship and interactive field for collaboration, research, communication and determining the value of art. Besides this database, we would like to include and create online research platform database for art theory research works, creating new discourse, social link between artists and all the others as a mediator for information, creating space where the significance of the process and research can be recognized. They will be transparent and understandable and giving them priority over the product creating communities and adding value with sharing skills between members, but also outside by including and educating wider networks such as audience and business environment, creating trust and relationships. It has potential to make a power shift so the artists can be ones who are saying what is art and what is the value of art, and not anymore to be confusing the value of art with its price determined by the, by the art market. This idea is scalable because it brings value through information, knowledge, and has a potential for growth. But naturally, this will create cultural change that will also bring a social change. Uh, do I have more time or? You have two minutes left. Okay, I can show a little bit. Um, let me just see how to, I can show some photos. It's just like a small portfolio that we can show like a few photos uh with some artists that were here so far and with some exhibitions so for example this is a collaboration with one a gallery in belgrade where one of the artists had an exhibition this one is called Dremont. and then this is a, a exchange program that we made with uh artists in residency from sweden they have an amazing accommodation with uh, with several studios and this is uh, inside of the studios. Uh, it's also like living and working space in one. And one of the artists from Serbia, Maria Bjekic, she was there 2018. This is her works and she had an open studio day. So this is just a few photos from open studio day. And a uh, Swedish artist that was here in Belgrade 2018, she made an open studio and a presentation of her works uh, that's in, in our space in Belgrade that we had. 
this is another artist, Serbian artist in Sweden that had an exhibition. Uh, it's almost like an exhibition because he, he made a lot of work in Sweden during these two months. So this is like an open studio day, but it can be also considered like a small exhibition. These are his works. His name is Predrag Damjanovic. And he was addressing this theme actually uh, a year before this all was happening. Uh, this is a Swedish artist that had exhibition in Magazine in Belgrade. Her name is Fanny Helgren. This was 2019. And um, just to present a space in Barcelona, home session, where Serbian artists are spending two months a year. Uh, first year was 2018. Uh, Serbian artist Stanko Gagarcin was spending two months uh, there, but he didn't have an exhibition because he was working uh, on a virtual, creating virtual space that he didn't finish by the end of the residency. But uh, Spanish artist Juan David Galindo, he was in Belgrade for two months, 2018, and he presented his works at the end of the exhibition in Catch 22. So this is just a few photos from the opening. And Serbian artist Marko Stojanovic had an exhibition in Home Session 2019. He's a photographer. Uh, then 2019, uh, Marijo Ribas is a Spanish artist that spent two months in Belgrade. She made an exhibition in Magazine at the end of her stay. And the last year we started this exchange with Les Cosesa. It is a former factory that's now turned into art spaces. And one artist from there, uh, Marla Yakaria, spent two months in October and November 2019 in Belgrade. And I was the first residence for the exchange, uh, the, uh, supported by iPortunus funding uh, for the performance. And for this artist in residency in Barcelona, I made a performance, created this uh, mask, and uh, presented my work uh, in October 2019. Some of the exhibitions that were uh, shown in magazine also included uh, last year, uh, Teresa Wilhusen. Uh, she had an exhibition of photographs that she created during her stay in Belgrade. Uh, then this was before uh, 2000, uh, March 2019, Alex Urso created an exhibition during his stay, and it was supported also by Italian Institute in Belgrade. This is also part of the same, of the same exhibition. Uh, this is the same space, Sabine Wedege. Uh, is, uh, she created an exhibition in July 2019. She is a Danish artist that spent three months in Belgrade. And uh, this is uh, Brian, uh, uh, sorry, Beatrix Reinhardt. Uh, she created an exhibition also in magazine uh, in June 2018. This is the same exhibition. And then for the end, uh, these are just few photos with uh, from the interviews from our YouTube channel. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gordana, for uh, bringing back uh, questions about movement, how your space and your, your residency is focused on movement, and also bringing the question of self-sustainability again to the forefront, because that's one of the biggest challenges that we all face as residencies. And as we collaborate, we also have to rethink of ways of co-financing uh, through reciprocity, through other uh, alternatives. Then also for thinking about the framework for collaborations and how it is necessary to for residencies to provide this and also to connect with local communities because that's what enriches the possibility of, of the artist working, uh, of the work of the artist, but also an expanding the possibility of dialogue with, with uh, a larger audience and a larger communities. And also for thinking about fostering each other as residency programs. How how do we go from here? What do we do next in, in terms of collaborate, uh, collaborations and also thinking about virtual spaces for dialogues? So with all of this in mind, I want to introduce the first question. And, and 
I'm thinking of this question as a way to provoke discussion because all of the residencies have presented issues of social justice, thinking about how change has to be um, thought of and also how residency spaces, how art spaces, how institutions that foster art and dialogues and, and also these possibilities for learning from each other uh, creates these sort of in-between space, in-between public, in-between private. And thinking about how the ties of exploitation extend to all areas of cultures, as we have been seeing in all of the presentations uh, from police brutality to the reality of social justice to uh, the economic crisis in Japan and how we rethink of spaces to how uh, Gordon is thinking of her space in terms of movement. All these possibilities are, of course, uh, rooted in history. So there's no artist residency, no artist residency network, no museum, no gallery, no art fair that is actually exempt from uh, the reality of history and exploitation. So the first question that I want to introduce is how can residencies become an affront to the order of things and seize the opportunity to interrupt the violent continuity of history? And as we all have expressed, the order of things have already changed. We don't know. There's an uncertainty in the air that will continue for probably for the next few years. And this is a chance for us to rethink what is our next step. So who would like to join and jump in to the first uh, question? Well, first of all, as this, this question of being in between an in-between kind of space, I think, as I mentioned in my presentation, gives artist residencies a lot of um, power for agency. Uh, that's the first thing, because <clears throat> we can operate at, we can operate discreetly, which doesn't mean that we can't do, you know, meaningful, impactful things. So I say this from the perspective of being in New York, where this residency status, I think it allows us to, to do a lot, to be very active at a very discreet, at a discreet level and do impactful things. <clears throat> so it's a little bit it's kind of a, a broad um, analysis, but there's that level kind of con contextual level that I feel intuitively artist residencies have that capacity. In terms of, you know, really making meaningful actions, as far as we're concerned here in the US <clears throat> with these, um, you know, we're living a very historic moment with these um, protests and the Black Lives Matter movement. There's a certain amount of initiatives that we can take as a small organization, you know, very concretely to address these issues. Um, and, you know, for example, we have this a residency program every year for New York based artists from underrepresented communities. So, you know, we always work with artists of color, but next year we will work exclusively with black artists for this particular program. Now, this is a small, I mean, small, it's a meaningful action, but this is what we can do within the framework of our capability. And so it's a question of being thoughtful and really thinking through what we can do. Um, and it's not going to happen necessarily overnight either. And um, so that's th those are my comments, if they're not too, too vague. <laughs> no, I think it's very relevant to think mm -hmm. about the power of agency, because it, we always think about agency as the capacity to react in context, as opposed to intention that makes you think that you're doing when in fact you're not necessarily doing anything. So I, I agree the power of agency is very relevant to the practice of residencies because we react in context and, and not only residencies, but you know any project that is in, uh, invested in the process of education. And, and with this in mind, I want to ask Sheng Li to jump in with her thoughts on the question. 
Yeah, I, I, I do not work with residencies, with artists. Uh, I work with students, no? Younger people who want to become an artist. So I was thinking, um, how can we stop of reproducing the exploitation of the artist? How can we make them think differently and react differently? Because people join the university with aspirational thoughts. They want a social mobility, they want to have money, they want the status of the artist. But most of them haven't had before the uh, aesthetic experience as, as, a, as a living thing that happens when you work with art, when you produce art, when you seek art, when you're surrounded by art. You're not fully sensibilized. sensibilized. <laughs> and then I, I really think we have to work with that experience. They have to feel, they have to feel their, to live the art before to work in that, before, before to have a voice their own voice, their own selves, when they're building uh, themselves, I think we have to to connect and to have this like eureka moment when their skin and their flesh and gets uh, so emotional and moved and their thinking is changed and the linking with the others is also changed. So... Um, they have to try and try and try again because also that experience is not doesn't happen casually, but also doesn't happen organized. It's just um, something in between um, randomness and hard work. So, right. That's what I think. And Yes, and I think it's it's very relevant to the idea that Natalie was uh, also presenting, how this possibility for agency reacting in context has to do with the encounter. And the encounter has to do with meeting each other in specific space and time. Um, Kanoko and Junpei, would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think I think from us, um, we often think about the notion of how we can question the notion of time and the dis and distance as well. Um, because, yeah, we talked about our um, history of our town and everything, but it also, you know, in this time of accelerating everything, being effective, um, you know, trying to do everything in a quick mo motion, um, we hope that um, our space becomes um, a place to question the flow of time and just to be to say okay to pause or to be confused or to be um, just wandering around or um, one of the artists who came to stay with us um, last year they did a project of loitering so um, they did different workshops and different um, talks to think about how to loiter, how to um, procrastinate, how to um, get, how to say, how to get bored, how to be not productive. So it was a very refreshing um, idea that we talked about and we brainstormed how to procrastinate from work. So we uh, came up with a bunch of um, different excuses to get, um, get out of work. And it, just as, it was just a fun exercise, but it actually make us make people and participants to, of the workshop, which are normal residents of the city, like they're not our professionals. They just come over to spend some time with artists. They're very curious um, about those people, you know, who don't, um, those people coming from the side of Japan and everything, but like it, it just make us, you know, question um, how we spend everyday life. And also the um, question of distance as well. So um, we talk, so this time for the new program that we started after the coronavirus, we set the, um, 
physical distance of um, eligibility for the artist to join for a 60 minute traveling distance. And that was also a new thing for us to think about really the physical distance, but at the same time, how the notion of distance is drastically changing when we start talking online, you know, things that we thought it was far, far away is all, um, all of the sudden right in front of us on the screen. And things that we felt so close are now very far away uh, mentally because we cannot see each other in person. And um, one of the residents of Matsudo City who is a big fan of Paradise Air, he, he's, a, um, he's a man, he's a craftsman making lanterns in, in town. He has this own little lantern shop. He came up with this idea of um, communication whiteboard. So he set up this whiteboard in, uh, in our corridor of the residence. And so the artist can write down questions about the city of Matsudo. And he comes to answer that question while the artists are not there. So they don't have physical contact but they have this very manual way of communication. So that was an invention um, proposed by one of the residents of um, the city. So we liked the idea very much of playing around with this um, idea of time and distance to rethink and to question um, what we are immersed in if we, can, if we don't pay too much attention. So. Thank you, Kanoko. Yes, through the panels, we have also seen several uh, panelists talking about the residency space as a space to be confused, to also fail as a, mm -hmm. as a possibility for experimenting without the heavy weight of having to do something concretely. Uh, Gordana, would you like to share your thoughts? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I would like to address one interesting thing that I made a note, like at the beginning of symposium, Dr. Kirsten was uh, saying something about the world as a human zoo. That really uh, struck me because that's something that we were feeling a lot of times uh, here, for example, in Serbia. And I would like just to make a note that like, that's an interesting question that should be considered over and over. And then for artists uh, traveling anywhere, like it is important to understand the specifics uh, of its culture and uh, the art in its con the context of the own context of the art. And also like, for example, art in Balkans is still struggling to be seen as equal and contemporary because of all the events in a recent past and still like because of the things that are still um, actually happening. So like, uh, for example, I think uh, some of the spaces in the world are more as like a melting pot and uh, with the different cultures and over time and history. So that gives a specific um, like um, uh, aesthetics and culture. And in a way people are, uh, are having these expectations of exoticism so in that way i think these questions should be reconsidered even though that for me personally traveling it's very important and uh for further development of my art projects and like uh, because um my projects are uh, taking interest in cultural identities and the meaning of traditions and mythologies and uh, especially in contemporary societies. But I think like uh, it, it should be reconsidered that everybody who are traveling should be reconsidered like traveling what uh, like for what Dr. Kirsten said, like traveling uh, in time, not in space. I think that's very interesting thought. and. Also, I, I really like what you said, Sheng Li, that like we need mirrors of flesh and blood. I think art, it's, it's art itself, it's like a mirror. And in that way, I think like art can be mediator between artists and the rest of the world, like be between everybody. I think that's really interesting thought. 
Thank you, Verlan. <laughs> yes, Thank no, you. absolutely. And what uh, Dr. Buick said is, is very relevant to every single discussion that we've been having in terms of the world as an exhibition, the idea of a human zoo, uh, a human circus, uh, you know, how these, how residencies are actually challenging. And, and it is a responsibility to challenge uh, place and history to rethink time and space. And space meaning the relationship that we establish with each other. You know, it is clear that this virtual space doesn't exist without each one of us. So space is only built on relationships, just like time. So thinking about how we challenge the order of things in terms of uh, time and space versus place and history is always relevant to our practice. I want to introduce the next question, uh, which has to do with knowledge and how knowledge is produced within our communities and how knowledge has allowed many communities to survive. How could we imagine a transnational community of residencies where solidarity and reciprocity are continuously exercised? And this is relevant to what we do within our local communities, because I don't think at this point it is possible to exist without each other. It is necessary to rethink our environment, our ecosystem, our larger ties with each other. As uh, Gordana was explaining, there's many similarities with Mexico, many similarities with Peru, many similarities even with Italy. You know, experiences in the process of inventing place and inventing history. So how can we imagine a transnational community um, of residencies where solidarity and reciprocity are continuously exercised? Right. I mean, for Residency Unlimited, as I said, collaboration and partnerships are vital to the existence of the organization. We have always operated that way. So I'm speaking in, on a, in a local context. Um, one of the reasons was to, by operating this way is that you can access resources that you don't necessarily have yourself. You can share resources. For artists, you know, artists can be uh, become a resident in another residency program, for example, and that kind of multiplication of networks is really, um, really important. And so we're not territorial at that level. New York is a context where that is possible because there's so many opportunities and there's so many people. It's, it's a tough city to live in, but there are a lot of opportunities. So bringing, taking that to a transnational level, for us, it's, it's absolutely, it's just the way we work. We work collaboratively all the time. So um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but for us, it's a very natural thing to do uh, to work this way. I mean, we've never worked in any other way than collaboratively. Right. And I think the, the important question that you're asking and, and answering mm. at the same time is how we share and access resources, but also how we don't confuse exchange with co-optation and exploitation, which is the tradition that has been ongoing right. for the last several mm. centuries. So this idea of the multiplication of networks and sharing is key to that, absolutely. Who else would like to join in, in their thoughts on sharing reciprocity and imagining a transnational community beyond our own uh, specific local position? Yes, go ahead, Natalie. Well, I'm also thinking that, you know, these residencies, we create platforms of encounter for artists from all over the world, for local artists, et cetera, et cetera. So, we're, we're creating a transnational community in the, in the very nature of our, of our structures because, mm -hmm. you know, we have, we, 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 we have this network of, of artists that is themselves, how can I say, they're, they're, they're the transnational community. Um, right, and I think the, the largest question that we're, we're asking um, because we, we agree that residencies and specifically, for instance, Arquetopia could not exist without ARPA, without artists, without right. that, that link. The bigger question now is 
what do we do as residencies now from now on you know what is the next step because we there's a lot of conversations about the art world there's a lot of conversations about the artists but behind the scenes and the reality of sustainability uh in terms of residencies i don't think it's achievable without each other more than only the artists and the residency between artists i mean between institutions between organizations between residencies throughout the world i completely agree with you but my point my point is that i think via the artist we're doing that as well already because then the artists are you know creating this network i think it's i mean it's 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 an obvious obvious thing to do and i think we're already doing it but the question is how to do it perhaps even more effectively well yes and also the world has changed what we used to do prior to the mm. pandemic will have to change and it has changed right. so the bigger question is how do we collaborate together in with different possibilities which we have been doing for a while yes right yes shengli we all have been doing for a while right i think just by being um conditioned to doing that i mean once again i come back to this uh idea that the 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 residency is an it, it is an elastic framework and that's where i think we have a lot of agency because of the elastic the elastic the elastic quality of our of of our art as an art structure we're incredibly elastic mm -hmm. yes thank you nelly shengli i also think that this crisis is a big opportunity to take out of context what we understand of artist work of the art world we used to think in, in these um, forms that um, has uh, exploitation uh, practices underneath and we have to take it out of the museums of schools we are trying to build a new space a virtual one and it's a new opportunity to to think about art in a different way we have to because we we cannot do what we are used to do and now we have to be aware of that exploitation practices and try to stop it i don't have the answer i just know um we have the opportunity because this is this is happening all over the world and we have to struggle and we have to try to not reproduce the same reality of exploitation right here on the virtual space right right absolutely with that in mind um kanoko and junpei do you have anything to share um yes um I think we are trying to take this moment of very unique time, as Natalie said, um, as an opportunity to um, strengthen our network and connection. So, um, because as I said, you know, you um, people living in um, the other side of the world are connected like this. So the distance, we can utilize this moment where we feel so closer to each other actually um, on on the global level. Um, we're sharing the, on the global level, we're sharing the same virus, same um, crisis and same an anxiety. So we, we, want, we want to use this moment to reconnect and strengthen our network. So that's why um, we've been trying to communicate with all of the artists that have previously come over to the residence. Uh, we just have chats, um, chat and drinking sessions over online. And also um, we, so, and also for the, for the new artists who came to the new program, we didn't ask them to come up with any um, result or outcome of the residency, but we just asked them to stay in touch. 
so that um, so three weeks is rather short. So we just uh, you know gave them time to just concentrate on on their um, thoughts and not worry about anything else. Just lock themselves up and just you know clear their mind up. And that was enough. Um, you know that three weeks is only for that. But like once they um, based on the experience in Paradise Air, they can develop an artwork or they can develop more, another connection with other artists or they can develop some new uh, new way of thinking. And I, we ask them to come back to Paradise Air with that new development that might happen in the future. So, and whenever we talk about exchange um, or like crossing um, ideas and getting connected, we like to use the term a knot, so making a knot. So it's not only just flow, flowless exchange going back and forth and just saying hi to each other, but we want to make a special knot every time we meet someone else, we meet another residency, uh, or we meet another artist. And the knot, the shape of the knot can be different every time. So that like we see every opportunity differently. So I think the key to um, prevent us from making this exchange not exploitation is to see every opportunity as a special um, one-time opportunity, not just in the framework of exchange or not right. do not do anything for the sake of exchange. That right. can easily lead to the exploitation. Right. Yes. Absolutely. I absolutely agree as well. And and. It, it's it's something that we've been sharing in in the process of the panel how we make these unique opportunity of encountering each other uh, this new possibility for something to change. Gordana, would you like to share some thoughts? Yes, I was thinking that also I consider this as a big opportunity because even though that we cannot so easily meet in person, I think that uh, opportunity to connect online, it's very valuable and it makes things even easier to connect. And I think in that way, we should use this opportunity uh, to connect, to organize uh, even like this symposium or Zoom meetings, or I think it's a great opportunity for sharing knowledge and for sharing skills. And also we can use this opportunity to learn from each other. I think like there is no one answer that we can all like uh, find instantly, but over the time, this is changing our perception of the world. And I think it's bringing like a lot of, like a lot of new views that we were not aware, like these opportunities to connect were there before, but we were just not uh, in a position, we were not paying attention to it. So in this way, now we're we're noticing it and I think we should use it more. And with this, uh, like creating opportunity between each other, um, for example, like we're creating an opportunity for us to exchange knowledges and experiences as residences, but in that way we're uh, creating possibility and making opportunities for everybody else. So in that way, it's kind of like we're creating um, like interactive field where everybody can join. So I think it's very important that like what you organize now and what we're all doing at this moment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I think it's 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 a process that um, in which all of us have been learning and sharing uh, in many different ways. We are running a little bit out of time. Yes. So I want to ask each one of you to share your final uh, thoughts. Yes, Natalie. Very you quickly, I know that you're doing uh, this final kind of panel session, yes. which is going to bring everyone together. So I think that that's an absolutely fantastic way of addressing this issue of how can we, you know, not only are there the panels, but then you're bringing everyone together and perhaps connecting everyone, you know, the emails, the, that way we can then continue the relationships that we have been, you know, privileged to, to uh, be part of. Uh, and it, it's it's like it's it's a continuing chain, let's say, that began with the symposium, and that I mean that in itself is addressing, you know, the 
this very important uh, matter that you're that you're talking about. There are a lot of people on this panel, these panels, that, including today, that I would love to be in touch with. You know, right, right, absolutely. So, it, it's it's been a, a very incredible and interesting journey because when we hmm. first started, it's it started as a series of events. Uh, we had to expand on an extra panel that uh, it's going to be launched in the next few weeks. We thought of the session that you're mentioning, which is on alternative economies, and we thought of one session, and it's probably going to have to be two sessions. And also, we wanted to have some sort of um, party at the end to be oh, able great. to to meet each other. Yes, you know, it, to make it as as physical as possible within the constraints. So yes, it's it's been an incredible journey that it's ongoing, and and this idea is to actually reconnect and continue these conversations, and you know, push them forward in many of the different. Uh, directions and I we have our dialogue section online which is a, a section where we post um, you know we, we we we're talking about the field of art residencies from a critical standpoint so we'll be posting all of your panels on the dialogue section just you know because I think it's it's it'll be amazing for the public to be able to access them wonderful <clears throat> yes wonderful and anyone who wants to share the links the panels they're open uh, so that anyone can actually participate and, and learn from each other, absolutely. Shengli, would you like to share your final remarks? Yes, I want to thank you again for the invitation, for the emotion of having these conversations, this dialogue, and I I want to uh, remember something I learned in, in, in school, when, and that was the storytelling it starts with a conflict. That's the first thing you need in order to write a story, to move things forward. The next thing you need is a character, and, and that can be our agent. The character or the agents. And the conflict, we have it. We have it, and it's the same one for all of us. So I really think we can uh, become something else, something new. Uh, about this time, and I, I already feeling this is happening. And thank you very much for sharing and for having this wonderful time. And I hope to to have the next session, the big one. That's yes, a, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you, Shengli. Um, Kanoko and Junpei, if you'd like to share your thoughts. Um, yes. Well, when we um, when we open our doors again to the artists after um, we decided to do this new special coronavirus version of the residency, um, because we prepared everything online, but um, we managed to meet them in person a couple times um, because the restrictions in Tokyo. And Japan are now it's more it's a little bit more relaxed than before um, so and that the feeling of having artists um, in the residence again it just simply felt so good to have them back and um, so we we want we, so we took this opportunity like it's very hard time for every one of us but it's also time for us to um, really realize what we really appreciate, um, what we really cherish. So um, we would like to keep this conversation going online and utilizing everything that we can, and you know, um, be open to any possibilities, any met methods of connecting with each other online. But um, on. At the same time, we know how special it is to be able to meet in person. So um, we all feel this. So I hope that um, in sometime in the future, we could also meet in person and everyone here is welcome to visit Matsudo in Japan as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kanako and Junpei. Yes, I think this is an open invitation to figure out what is the next step to make this symposium in person. 
you know, whether it's in Mexico, whether it's in Japan, whether it's in any place in the world, it's it's something that we all have been thinking about and we all um, feel the need for. So yes, absolutely, we'll figure it out. And uh, last but not yeah. least, we would like to ask uh, Gordana. I totally agree. I think that should be definitely the next step that we should all meet in person. Maybe we should organize a symposium in each of the cities <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Why not? I mean, like uh, this was really amazing experience and a great opportunity. Thank you so much for having me and for organizing all this. And I think we should definitely keep in touch and continue and exchange and to figure it out how to meet in person. Yes, absolutely. It's her pleasure. And I want to wrap up uh, the panel with uh, several thoughts. Um, it has been wonderful to have you all because we have shared our perspectives, our processes as uh, organizations, and uh, very invested in our role within our communities, which is uh, really incredible. I think in the next few sessions, spe specifically thinking about the tech sessions that Nayeli will give some information in a moment, it will be necessary to bring our knowledge, our expertise, uh, our generosity to rethink reciprocity and figure out what's the next step in, in, in the many possibilities of these dialogues in the many different directions. Um, I really like how we thought of the framework for collaborations, how local communities are at the center of that, uh, but also fostering each other with our differences. And I really appreciate all the answers that you have given to the questions, which are actually larger questions. We have asked questions about social justice. We have asked questions about moving forward or moving into any direction at this point to figure out uh, what does that even mean? Um, also, what is the kind of collaborative work that we have to invest in in the future? We have thought of uh, food justice, for instance, what is the next step for everyone? And also, how can we react to what happens in the world, which is actually what residencies are all about and should be about? How do we make ourselves available as we grow as a community? So thank you for that. And um, Nayeli has some, some important information mm -hmm. to share. First of all, thank you all for being part of this. It's been a really interesting journey, uh, not just for us, but also for everyone involved in the symposium. Uh, on July 23rd, we will have the tech use session, the first tech use session. The idea is to replicate uh, experience like the one we have with ARPA, as Shengli mentioned at the beginning, we've been collaborating with the university, with ARPA for the last five years, which has been great because it's a, a way that we can connect with students, we can understand how to work as a community. So we would like to establish that with all the participants that we've been working with for the last month in the symposium. You will get an email with all the information from uh, about the Techio session in the next week. So I hope you can join us and thank you again for being part of this. Mm -hmm. So thank you again. We have uh, our next session in the next few days will be the book presentation uh, on contemporary artists residencies reclaiming time and space. So we're also looking forward to seeing you there. And uh, thank you for joining these uh, wonderful dialogues and we'll see you again soon.